Hi everyone, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Abel. In the previous tutorial, we looked at the Cupertino page scaffold, the Cupertino tab scaffold, the Cupertino tab bar. We also looked at the Cupertino buttons, Cupertino switch, and then the Cupertino slider. We are going to go ahead and take a look at the Cupertino dialog and then the Cupertino item picker widget. So I'm going to come up here in the body of my home page and create a method called Cupertino Dialog and it's a future to return an hour Dialog Sure. This method is going to be a sync. So, then I'm going to await to show a dialog. This dialog is a context. Then I build a So this context, I'm gonna provide it here as a build context. Context. And then use this context here. Okay, so this builder also takes a build context. Context and then returns a widget. In my case, I'm going to return a widget my dialog class. And this dialog class will be the class which will provide the Cupertino alert dialog for me. So I'm gonna copy this, go down here, all the way here, and create a stateful widget. And then instead of this returning the container, I'm gonna return the Cupertino alert dialog. Okay, this Cupertino alert dialog also takes some properties, some title, content, and actions. So the title I'm going to use is text. Alerting you. Okay, so this content takes a widget. In my case, I'm going to put a text over there. Text. Some. Rich. Rich. Data. Goes. Here. Goes here. Okay, so for this, my actions, I'm going to provide two flat buttons. Flat, flat button, exit child, and on press. Then a child. I'm gonna put a text here. I'm call it verify. And then when it Click on it. I want to print. Verify. And then the other action will also be a flat button. Yeah, I'm going to say cancel. 
and then here I'm gonna actually remove it from the screen. Okay. Data dot of context dot of context. Okay. So right now I have this class called my dialog class which is actually being returned in this my dialog function so i'm gonna find a place to call this function i'm gonna copy this and then put it in a button i'm gonna put it in this one and provide a build context argument so i'm gonna put in this context there Okay, so that I expect to see a dialog when I press this. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna press this. And you see a dialog there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some colors to my text to make it look nicer. I'm gonna give this a color style text style. I'm gonna give color blue. I'm gonna copy that and put it here. And then for the alerts, also, I'm gonna make this red, I think. And you can see my dialog has changed. Now when I press this, it goes away. So I'm gonna press this again. My dialog shows. When I press this, you can see verified printed here. And then when I press this, the dialog goes away. So the next item I want to show you guys is the Cupertino item picker. So I'm gonna go all the way up. So you can see I've created this list of items to make this tutorial as short as possible. So just like a Platino dialog, I'm also going to make a method for this to return a widget private method build item picker. So this method is going to return a Cupertino picker. This picker takes an item extent, takes a background color, on selected item changed, and then a list of children. I'm going to go to all of them. Okay, so for this item extent, I'm just going to put 15.0. So this one will be the background color of your item picker. Color dot white. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put in this children property. So this children property is a list of widgets. So I'm gonna go ahead and say a list of widgets that want to generate from our items. So this is the length of the items we want to generate. And the length in the generator will take an index. And to return the third widget. Here's a child of text. From my items list, parent index. I'm missing something here. I'm gonna put a semicolon here. Uh, come here to this. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna remove this semicolon. So back to this unselected item change property. This is the current index. 
So what I actually want to do is go up here and create a variable selected items and set to zero. So anytime you select an item, the index of the item will be put here. And I want to set the state of my widget with a selected item to my new index. Okay. So what the Cupertino picker actually does is it helps you select an item and return an integer for you. So after this, I'm going to print this that you selected items at selected items. Okay. So this will actually help us know which item you selected. Okay. So what's happening here? We have this list of items. We are generating the data based on the length of that list and its index. And then we are returning this items at that particular index. So when we choose an item, this unselected item change property gets called. It will provide the index that you chose. And I'm setting the index to this selected item index, which by default is zero. And then based on that, I'm printing this item you selected based on the selected item index. So right now what we will have to do is I want to wire this up to a button. I'm going to copy this. Wire it up to a button. Okay, so it looks like this button is not occupied. So I'm going to say that anytime I tap on this button, I'm going to await. And that's because I'm not making this method a sync. I should mark it as a sync. I'm going to wait for a modal bottom shift. It's an int. It takes a context, which I'll give a current context. And then a builder. This builder takes a build context and returns a widget. It's a build context. So the widgets I want to return is my build item picker. So remember this thing up here, we declared it as a widget. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna press this. I'm expecting to see a bottom sheet with items that I can scroll. I'm gonna press this. And you can see I have this small, small text of the list data and I can scroll. But then I want to increase the size of this. So I increase the item extent. And then when I press this, you can see I have this beautiful bit here. So you can actually increase the size of your text to make it look larger. So I'm going to look for this style. Text style. 2.0. Okay, yeah. So I see now my text are bigger. Okay, so that will be it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at the Cupertino action sheet and the Cupertino segmented control. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel.